What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where we learn, do, and talk about photography until we're sick of it. And I'm testing out the walking and talking to the camera capabilities of the R7 to see how it handles that kind of footage before I set out on my fall foliage photography tour next week. So this will be the last testing that I do with the camera. For the rest of this video, I'm just gonna be sharing my anecdotes, experiences, samples, and examples from the last three months of using it. So if you wanna hear that discussion, please stick around. If not, I hope you'll join me next week for some inspiring autumnal landscape photography. If you just want the long story short, the R7 is a good camera. A uh, long story slightly less short, if you need the features of this camera, especially considering the price, the R7 is an incredible camera. Uh, long story long? Okay, so like I said, the Canon R7 is an incredible camera for its price point and its feature set. And so in order to really elaborate on those thoughts, I think uh, we have to consider like what the feature set is, who needs this feature set, and exactly where the price point sits among Canon's cameras and other cameras. So I think this is a perfect occasion for me to have this conversation because uh, not only is this uh, exactly three months to the day that I've owned the camera, I bought it exactly uh, three months ago on this day in July. But this is also the day that I've recouped all of the money that I've invested in the camera with work that I've been able to do with it. So while this is a creative tool and I don't think that it's uh, totally appropriate to assess it just in dollars and cents terms, um, the fact that I've been able to do all kinds of things with it that I never thought I would be able to afford to do and then it's gonna open up that opportunity for other creators as well uh, with very uh, low risk investment and very potentially, uh, in, my, in my case, uh, potential that was realized a potentially very fast return on that investment. That fact has definitely colored my experience with the camera and um, is definitely going to color uh, the way that I assess the camera and the way that I make recommendations regarding it. Okay, so this bears explaining what it is exactly that I use the camera for and why it fits so neatly into the pegs, is that right? Why the pegs of this camera fit so neatly into the holes of my camera needs. So uh, first off, you guys know that I'm a, a scenic outdoor and landscape photographer. I also do some wildlife photography or I try to and um, I, I, I work primarily in the outdoors. And in the R7, we've got a nice uh, weather sealed, rugged, uh, conventional SLR style body with, a, with Canon's RF mirrorless mount, 30, three megapixel APS-C sensor, uh, 4K video up to 60 frames per second with no crop, uh, HD video at 120 frames per second. This is 10-bit 422 video with Canon's C-Log3 profile with the other standout feature at this price point being the in-body image stabilization. So the uh, R7 is my second camera and I've been shooting with two cameras since uh, I think 2019 when I noticed that uh, the videos that I used to promote my stills photography were getting more attention than the still photography itself. Maybe that doesn't say much for my stills photography, but uh, I think it also says something for the way that uh, social media and internet trends were moving uh, back in that time frame. This was before Instagram TV, Facebook Watch, uh, Reels. I think TikTok might have been a gleam on the edge of the digital horizon. So, uh, so as it became more important to me to promote my photography uh, with videos, like behind the scenes videos, on location videos, these kinds of videos. Um, I was trying to, to make my videos look more presentable than the ones that I was making with my cell phone or my GoPro or you know whatever camera happened to have the batteries charged at the time. And uh, I, I realized that if I invested in a cheap used DSLR, the first one that I bought was the Canon, the original Canon 7D. Uh, not only would it let me shoot through my uh, nice Canon lenses for a higher quality video, but there were also a lot of other benefits to just having a second camera generally. So yes, I could record those videos of myself using my primary camera, but also the crop sensor of the 7D complemented my full frame camera nicely. It had faster shooting, which opened up more potential for wildlife where it made my wildlife shooting a lot easier. And you know, generally it was just nice to have a second camera around as peace of mind to know that 
if my primary camera failed on me in the field, I could still continue working and capturing uh, photos to some extent. From that camera, I upgraded to the, the M6 Mark II mirrorless camera as I was migrating my cameras to mirrorless, and, uh, and that let me start shooting in 4K with autofocus. So that was a huge leap forward, both in making my videos look, look better, but also in making them easier to record. And I was very satisfied with that until I, I realized that I had built up enough skills in recording and editing videos over those you know three years that I could start to sort of offer this as a service to other creators, um, a videography service to other creators, small makers, small business owners. And I started doing that this year and that's when I realized that the, the M6 Mark II was just not quite the right tool to, to deliver professional results. It didn't have a log profile, it didn't have sensor stabilization, it didn't have basically all the things that I was looking for in this camera. And uh, so when Canon announced this camera, I was basically already ready to buy it. In fact, I was considering switching camera systems because a, a camera like this didn't exist in Canon's lineup. So it was an easy sale for me. It had all the features that I needed. It uh, suited all my needs. In fact, it, it was a significant enhancement upon all those things that I usually use my second camera for. So uh, do I need a camera this nice to make YouTube videos? No, but it's been great for my client work. The video is one of the strengths of this camera that I'll elaborate on later. It's also uh, not just better for wildlife because it has a crop sensor like my previous cameras were. A lot of the features in this camera are basically purpose built for wildlife, like it's animal detection autofocus tracking. In fact, I'll card my whole playlist of R7 videos up here and you can, you can see a couple of different situations that I've put it through uh, for wildlife. And then, you know, as a second camera, of course, I have no hesitation uh, putting this into service um, as a replacement to my stills camera. In fact, with the exception of dynamic range and maybe the ability to capture a full frame image, this camera is by and large superior to my full frame camera, uh, the original EOS R, which is the camera filming me now. Okay, another way to assess the R7 is as a hybrid camera, right? It's got great stills features and great video features. And uh, if you're primarily a stills photographer, it makes the recommendation process a little more complicated because um, the, stills, the stills features are great, but they're also somewhat specialized. And so whether this is a worthwhile uh, purchase as a first camera or as an upgrade for you, uh, really depends a lot uh, on what camera you're working with now and what type of shooting you do. So for example, uh, I found it to be somewhat lackluster as a landscape camera in terms of its dynamic range, its ISO handling, and uh, the fact that it's difficult to get wide angle, good, sharp, high quality wide angle lenses, uh, either for the native RF mount or even for the original uh, EF or EFS mount using the adapter. Whereas for wildlife shooting, I found the camera to be really standout. It's got Canon's best autofocus system. It may not, the implementation here may not be quite as good as in their like $5,000 cameras, but it's still probably the best autofocus system that you can get in an APS-C camera. And in addition to that, the 15 frame per second mechanical shutter came in very handy for me, as well as the 30 frames per second in the electronic shutter and the raw burst mode that can capture photos from even before you fully press the shutter button was really handy when I was photographing birds, for example, to get the moment that the bird launches. I didn't have to worry about my reaction time hitting the shutter. The camera already had all those images recorded and uh, gives you 30 uh, full resolution uh, raw files every second. So, so for wildlife, it's very easy to recommend this camera if you're coming from an older DSLR or even a, a newer mirrorless camera and you want the extra reach that the APS-C sensor affords you. Looking at the camera industry more broadly uh, is a little more complicated because this is a, a, a kind of a unique camera in terms of its hybrid capabilities. Um, Sony's new FX30 looks like it's got some great video features. I haven't tried that out, but um, it's $300 more expensive this, than this camera and it, uh, it basically has almost no stills features. It has no mechanical shutter, it has no viewfinder. So uh, if you're interested in doing photography and videography, it might not be the best tool for you. And I would probably say the same thing about, uh, for example, the Blackmagic uh, pocket cinema cameras. Fuji has two new cool X-H2 series cameras, which probably best this in stills and photo capabilities. So that might be worth a hard look if you're not already invested in, in a camera system. Um, and everyone's got their own preferences, but for me personally, I like to do my stills work with a full frame uh, conventional Bayer sensor camera. And so uh, having the ability to interchange lenses and accessories between my cameras is also important to me. And so the, um, the, the R7 for its features, and also not to mention that it's 500 to $1,000 cheaper than the Fuji cameras, I think this was a more compelling option for me. 
but the strengths of the R7 as a video camera became much more clear to me when I compared it across other offerings in the Canon lineup. Um, you can see my full review video for in-depth side-by-side comparison video footage testing, but I looked at this against the R6 and the EOS R, and I really thought that, you know, considering that the R6 is a full-frame camera that costs $1,000 more, I thought that the, if the R7 was even comparable to it, it would kind of be a shame because of that $1,000 price difference, or I guess uh, good news for R7 buyers. Um, but I actually found that in many situations, if I didn't need the full frame field of view that the R6 offers, or it's um, a better performance in low light situation at high ISOs, um, I found that the R7 was the camera that I would reach for over and over and over again. It had a lot of features that I really wish that the R6 implemented. So for example, the R6 has a 30 minute record limit that makes it kind of a pain for long format recording. Um, with the R7, I could let it record events on a tripod and it could just roll shutter continuously and I didn't have to worry about it randomly shutting off on me. And the R6 uh, also has a tendency to shut off due to overheating with very uh, minimal warning, whereas the R7 can overheat in some of its modes, but it's much more tolerant of long, long format shooting uh, without overheating. And it's got a very helpful graduated temperature gauge that shows up to uh, give you a better heads up of when it might overheat and let you manage the camera behavior a little better. Another thing that I was surprised to prefer in the R7 was its rolling shutter behavior. Uh, the R6 and the R7 both have uh, an option to uh, oversample and downscale an image to give you the highest quality image. And of course, th those modes also give you a little more rolling shutter. And of course, they also chew up battery life and generate heat. Uh, the R7 also has a standard 4K mode though that allows you to overcome some of those, those hurdles with overheating, with battery life, and with rolling shutter that the R6 didn't have. So the standard 4K mode is softer than the, the highest quality 4K mode. Of course, I would expect that. I hear some people complain about that, but to me that's a, an advantage to be able to have that as an option to help control uh, the rolling shutter. So in most scenes that I'm shooting, I don't necessarily need both high detail and good quality motion capture, but the R7 sort of lets me make that decision myself uh, whether I want that trade-off, uh, whereas with the R6, it wasn't even an option. Lastly, I compared the R7 against the original EOS R for video quality, and looking at the footage side by side, I couldn't justify any reason to spend more or even the same amount of money for the EOS R. A good example of that is recently I did a, a, a commercial shoot for a remote client and uh, I shot the whole project on the R7 with the exception of one shot which was I wanted to get a wide shot and I had the wide angle lens mounted on the EOS R and I got lazy and I didn't want to switch uh, lenses so I just I, I did that shot with the EOS R and when I sent the project off to the client they said uh, this thing looks great <laughs> except for this one shot and it was the shot that I did with the EOS R and they asked me to just take that shot out so um, when I'm shooting with the EOS R, I'm usually impressed with the footage. It looks good, shot through good Canon lenses, good color, uh, good contrast, good tones. But when you look at the, these, the footage from these two cameras side by side in a timeline, uh, the footage from the EOS R just sticks out like a sore thumb. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna switch this thing back into vlogging configuration and retire it from its role of being the subject of my channel to the tool that I used to create it. So for those of you who have uh, followed and subscribed to see my R7 content, I hope that you'll stick around so you can see how I use it to make my channel. And uh, I'll give you my final conclusions on the camera now. Okay, final thoughts. So like I've said, the R7 is a very difficult camera to recommend. And I find that, you know, even though people like me are really impressed with it, there's no shortage of people online and the comment section of my own videos provides me ample evidence of this who find the camera disappointing and i think that that comes down to uh, the tendency to need to classify the camera and sort of understand it uh, in the context of cameras that are available now and cameras that have come before where this is really kind of a unique proposition and uh, i think that the confusion in classifying it somewhat arises from the fact that this this really is like the counterpart to a Canon camera that doesn't exist, right? This, this would be the perfect APS-C version of a Sony a7 IV that, that doesn't exist in Canon's camera lineup. And so because of that, uh, I think people tend to have an expectation that, well, this should be a, uh, either this should be a, a fully featured and specced professional camera with an APS-C sensor and no other compromises, 
And, uh, or this is what we typically are expecting to see from APS-C cameras, which is basically like a Canon Rebel with a bunch of useless features and some incremental improvements and a thousand dollar price tag. Uh, and the truth is that this camera is really neither of those things. So I think the people who are most disappointed uh, get this camera and say, oh, this, this has a five second buffer and it's got a plastic piece on it and it doesn't take my thousand dollar memory cards. And you know, if for $1,500 that was your expectation, uh, I'm sorry, but yes, this camera will likely disappoint you. But I think there's a whole other school of experienced photographers out there, maybe people like me, who've been burned by a bad camera purchase in the past, an incremental upgrade to an APS-C camera, who are not looking at this uh, seriously and probably should be because in my experience, this is much closer to a professional camera, uh, certainly in terms of the features and the output quality uh, than a traditional upgraded Canon Rebel, uh, you know, with eight frames per second instead of five frames per second. Um, and I think that uh, both my experiences and the um, content that I've been able to create with it uh, bear that out. And so hopefully providing that evidence for you has helped for you to make a, a uh, an informed buying decision. And if you are considering purchasing this camera, I hope that you'll show me some appreciation for taking the time to give you this advice and share it with you by using my affiliate links in the video description to make your purchase. And uh, as I said, next time, we will be uh, out in nature enjoying the change of the season and taking some beautiful landscape photographs. And I truly hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel as well and coming along for that. And we'll, you can enjoy the footage that the R7 is making as the creative tool for making my video content. But until I see you then, you guys keep an eye out and a foot forward and thank you so much for watching.